Morning guys, it's early for me on a weekend. I'm out of bed and ready to go outside. We've got quite a few little jobs we wanna get done today. And one of the best motivational tools for all of these things we do is to have someone willing to do it with you and help. And obviously I've got my amazing wife. But I've spoke to you before about how our routines of peak activity don't overlap very well. My wife's very much a morning person and I'm very much an afternoon and evening person. And uh, I've described it before, but my wife's a bit like a light switch and I'm like an iron. So you turn us both on and my wife's instantly ready to go at 6 a.m. and I take a long time to get going. But once I get going, I can keep going and I'm the same the other end. I tend to want to carry on. Whereas uh, when we're done, when we hit just after lunchtime, my wife will be done though, won't you love? She'll be feeding your goats at the yeah, my wife will still go out and feed the goats at four o'clock this afternoon, but, but after lunch, she's uh, much less inclined to start. start something. She wants to make that very, very clear. It's just starting things. <laughs> but I'm up and uh, as ready to go as I can get. Still a bit blurry eyed. But uh, yeah, we're going to get on, get outside. We're going to fill in the ponds today. Let's see what else we've got time for. We're starting to really get our head around leaving this property now and, and getting everything up together. I mean, we're. Is it safe to say that we're not we're not as in love with this place as we were a little while ago? Now we've kind of made our peace with it. I think we've just moved on. Yeah. We're ready for our next adventure, so we're gonna... Yeah, my wife's saying, you know, we've we've moved on mentally. We're ready for the next adventure. So uh, yeah, I think that's the best way of summing it up. I'm really quite excited. I, well, I keep telling my wife I'm really excited to get into the old house and start doing a load of work on it. So yeah, that's where we are. I'll um, I'll get my boots on and I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. So my wife has done the amazing job of, of taking down the house that was here. We had a chicken house there. That's already done. Um, we've got some leek back there, some uh, swede back there, a few Brussels sprouts, uh, some perpetual spinach, some chard that all wants harvesting. But other than that, this bed is barren now. So we're going to basically slice off some of the compost and topsoil, the wood chip that we've been adding over the years. We're going to gather up some of the We've got some containers there that we were growing things in, things like Jerusalem artichokes. Um, so they're full of spent compost, if you like, and we've got our compost bins. We're going to empty all of them into the ponds. So these are the ponds. One of the first things I did when I got here was start digging these. We're going to just fill them in today. And as you can see, we've already started. But this is the one thing that the landlord asked us to do, really, before we leave, to make sure these are filled in. So that's what we're doing today. quick chat about compost. So we've got three bins here and I was kind of running a bit of an experiment this year. I wasn't worried too much about it but generally speaking we've got three bins and what I did is I used this one for mostly manure. So the manure and the hay, the bedding from our animals. I used the next one for mostly what we'd call greens. So mostly waste vegetable products and things of that nature and then the third one I did a mix I mixed everything and in that one we had the vegetable waste matter we also had the animal bedding we also had rhubarbs wool and just as many very different things as I could in that top one and it's a stark difference actually between the three composts now all three of these bins at their peak would have been fairly close to full the one in the middle a bit less than the rest but you know both all of them fairly close to full and now it's all compacted down and shrank down and rotted down to about a foot, foot and a half. So it just goes to show how much volume you need and how much volume you get. In here behind me, as you can see, in the middle here, we've got some areas where the, the bedding is hardly rotten down at all. 
Now this is still great mulch compost. This would be great for my beds. The only thing to say is any seeds, weed seeds and that that were in here, because it wasn't hot composted, it was never that big and that active, any seeds in here are still gonna be viable. So I'd have to really watch out with that. But in terms of nutrients for the plants and getting turned into the soil, this would have been great. But like I say, it's not quite rotten down as much as some of our others. So let's have a look next door next. Okay, so in here was mostly vegetable matter and a lot of the waste veg that we pick up from the fruit and vegetable shop to feed our animals, things like alliums, they don't get eaten. So they go straight in here, some old onions and stuff. And you can see here, even we've taken the top off of all of these. So you can see even underneath, some of the alliums are still intact. And the other thing to say about this compost is it's really, really wet and soggy. So again, this would actually, I can't imagine that that guy is gonna grow much. Once he gets into the bed, he'll carry on rotting, but there's the risk. Some of the alliums will come back. That's not really a huge concern, is it? Because we can just pull them out. But other than that, you know, this has rotten down. It's just really, really wet. So this again could be added to our bed, but it's not perfect. It's not what I would call perfect compost by a long stretch. And this is our third set of compost, which had a really good mix. And as you can see, everything in here has rotten down really well and given us this great compost material that would be perfect for our vegetable beds. You can see that it's still active. Here's a little bit from around the periphery that's still breaking down and you can see all of the mycorrhizal fungi doing their thing to break down. That was some chicken feathers. So in here, you know, that's just around the edge. In the center, we're pretty much there. So it just goes to show if you're composting, it does make a difference to break up the material you're going in there, just in terms of the speed, which is gonna break down. I did a episode on the podcast this week or last week on compost. So I just thought this would work nicely to complement that. Right, back to work for me. You've seen how much we filled already of that larger pond and we've only moved i don't know probably two thirds of this one bay so so far so good goes a long way once it's all once it's all sort of fluffed up you know now the other thing we had to do to fill this space we've got our two chicken tractors now you know we use the deep litter method so this had six months worth of bedding in it my wife's already cleaned this one out all done and she's just taken the tractor over there because we're going to move that one. We should have done it with this one, really. And we're going to reverse that up to one of the ponds so that we can just shovel it straight out the back. In fact, guys, help me out. We've got these two chicken tractors and I don't know what to do with them. So have you got any ideas? They're going to be a nightmare to get off the property. The trailers themselves are, are roadworthy, but not with the, the house attached to them. So I'm not sure even if I can sell them, I can't leave them here, so what should I do with them? Please tell me, should I just burn, take everything apart and burn it and uh, sell the trailers or move the trailers? Should I try and sell them as they are? I, I'm, I'm lost, so uh, yeah, help me out, please. We're getting there now. We've still got to top them all off and sort of level the area generally, but as you can see, we've got one, two, three, pretty full. It's just about filling the hollows now and leveling it out. My wife has done the amazing job of clearing out both of the chicken trailers. So uh, yeah, we're getting there. So far, so good, love, yeah? So we've emptied all the compost bins and all of the things like that. And we've got this big pile of wood chip that we had delivered last year and as you can see this is breaking down nicely as well down inside so 
So this would have been, if I was growing again this year, this would have been our garden mulch, this, and then probably later in the year, the compost from those compost piles that weren't quite there. And there's probably, there probably is enough to have coated our vegetable bed with a couple of inches of this. So this is, uh, this is gonna be all we need to finish. So that's just done here for the day. Uh, my wife's got some commitments, she's got to leave. And I've got some commitments to my stomach, so I'm gonna go in the house and uh, cook myself some ham. But uh, you can see it's coming together nicely. So another three or four trailer fulls in our, in our trusty wagon here of that, of that wood chip. And that will just level all this out nicely and, and bring it to a finish. So I'm really happy with that. We've decided we're gonna do that tomorrow morning. And, uh, I think this was this was playing on your mind, love, wasn't it? Do you feel happier? So I think you know we're we're pleased with where we are today. Would you agree, darling? So uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to go in and get some lunch, and I'll catch up with you guys on the next video. Thanks for coming along with me this morning, and I'll speak to you really soon. Cheers. <laughs>